it's time we talk about the blue channel clipping and how to avoid it when working with Nikon raw footage in DaVinci Resolve. Now, a couple of weeks ago, Nikon released a video that was their official workflow in DaVinci Resolve that helps reduce this issue that you can sometimes see when working in the program. However, I found out about this new workflow at NAB and they asked me my thoughts on it. And I'm like, well, it's a simple color space transform. Of course, that's gonna work. Personally, I prefer to use Resolve's built-in color management. And they let me know that Resolve's built-in color management was what was causing the issue. I sat down with them and we switched between the two timeline color processing modes and the issue didn't present. So this procced me and my colleague, who's also a colorist, we were out there in AB to do a little bit more digging to try to figure out what was actually causing the issue. Who's to blame? Nikon or black magic design. So we actually not only did our testing out there at NAB and showed what we saw to black magic design, but we also did a little bit more testing when we came back from the trade show. And we also have sent off our findings to Nikon. They're doing their own internal testing, but I wanna let you guys know what we found. So we're gonna talk about the color processing modes that work and don't work. We're gonna go through the testing methodology that allowed us to isolate whether this is a Nikon sensor problem or a DaVinci Resolve problem and then we're going to talk about who's actually to blame here. So let's first talk about the color processing modes that work and do not work. Now, the Nikon rep and I were actually on two different pages because what they meant by automatic color management not working and causing a blue channel clipping problem is actually the box that you can check when you go to a DaVinci Resolve color managed timeline. So there's two options. You can either uncheck that box and select your color processing mode, or if you have the box checked, you can choose an SDR or HDR timeline and an SDR or HDR output. This is what causes the blue channel clipping. Now, we actually did some tests on this just on the footage themselves. And what you can see here is that when we're working with this Nikon log footage, we get not only just blue channel clipping, but a lot of different colors seem to get kind of wonky in this color processing mode. So the question is, who's to blame? Is it Nikon or is it DaVinci Resolve? And the answer in this case, it's DaVinci Resolve. How do we figure this out? Well, we set up our own custom color management pipeline that's going to allow us to avoid Nikon log at all and see if that changes anything. What we did is we set up a custom color management pipeline with Nikon log as the input color space. Our working timeline color space was set to red wide gamut and log 3G10 as well as the output color space. From there, we turned off both the input and output DaVinci Resolve transforms and we exported this to a 12-bit codec. From there, we imported the exported clip into DaVinci Resolve. We went back into our color management settings, set up automatic color processing with an HDR timeline working color space and an SDR output, and we saw a difference between the blue channel and all of the other colors there. That being said, even with that, there was still an issue. It was simply reduced. These results are more workable, but they're not perfect, which means this color processing mode is off limits when you're working with Nikon log in general. But the reason why we did this is because we wanted to see if by removing the Nikon log factor, if there was going to be any difference, because on a sensor level, we're not changing anything. We're not changing the color science by converting Nikon log in Rec 2020 into the red wide gamut and log 3G10. We're simply just changing the color space, trying to see how Resolve is handling it. And simply put, with the same color data, it's handling it different. This led us to something that we noticed with respect to working with Nikon and RAW and DaVinci Resolve in general. If we just simply restart the program and have a clean slate with default settings and we import an in RAW clip into the timeline, if you have any saturated blue LEDs, you will notice that they are not being rendered in a log format, such as one that you would see when looking at the proxy file. No, this blue is already deep being debayered. This is making me think that DaVinci Resolve again is having an issue with the color matrix for Nikon log. So this could actually come down to whoever perhaps sent that out from Nikon or it could come back to DaVinci Resolve. And this is something that we showed the technicians at Blackmagic Design which prompted them to give us their card. Because at first they're like we just shot the footage wrong and then we showed them 
them to log and they're like, wait a minute, that don't look right. Now let's go ahead and talk about the two methods that do work. And that's the method that I was already using and the method that Nikon put out because essentially they're not different. Nikon's method, which is really just a standard color grading method if you prefer to use CSTs, is to simply use a DaVinci YRGB color space and have your timeline color space set to the DaVinci wide gamut and then your output color space set to Rec 709. And a little caveat here, it's actually to whatever your mastering display is set to, which should be set to whatever you're delivering to. Then from there, you're going to use two CSTs. The first CST, the input color space is going to be set to Rec 2020 and the input gamma is going to be set to Nikon N-Log and that's going to go into the DaVinci Wide Gamut and the DaVinci Intermediate. From there, we're going to take the DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate as our inputs and then set the outputs to whatever we're going out to, which could be Rec 709, P3, etc. And you would do your color grading in between those nodes. That being said, there's no difference between using a CST in this case and using a DaVinci Resolve color managed timeline, which is what I do. My settings in color management are to use a DaVinci Resolve YRGB color managed timeline, set the color processing mode to the HDR DaVinci wide gamut. We get to this by unticking the automatic color management box and then setting our output color space to whatever we're going to. In this case, it's going to be Rec 709, Gamma 2.4, and we're using the correct color space on our monitor with that set. Now, the difference here is that now all of my footage is actually exported into the viewable color space that I'm delivering to. Now this simply does two things. One, it saves time. But the other thing is, is that you have to understand we're not doing much different than if we were to use a CST. And here's why. What DaVinci Resolve is doing in this case is it has implied CSTs or actually what we would call an input device transform and an output device transform, similar to the way if we were to use an ASUS color management timeline. It's simply an implied CST on both sides of the timeline that you cannot see and the system is handling the color management. When we're looking at both of these methods, we can see that there's no difference when using a CST or if we're using an HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut color processing mode. Even if we take a still of one and slide between it, you can see that the waveform and the parades, nothing is moving. None of the information is changing, which is letting us know that the same process is happening. So if you want to use Nikon's method, though, and you guys are CST people, what you guys can do is just set up that CST node tree and then go ahead and go into your power grade section and select grab a still. This will keep this saved throughout all of your DaVinci Resolve projects and then you can simply apply that node graph or apply that grade to each and every clip and save yourself a little bit of time instead of setting them up individually. This lets me know that to some extent DaVinci Resolve can handle Nikon in log footage correctly. That being said, in extreme circumstances, we can still break this. We can still get the blue channel to look a little bit funky and not quite as smooth as we would want it to. So we did a little bit more testing and this was the testing that we did back at the studio. So in order to test this, when I got home, we set all of the studio lights to blue and then we recorded a clip in Nikon Log and we recorded a clip in ProRes RAW and converted it to Cinema DNG. The reason why I use ProRes RAW in this case is because that's going to take all of our sensor data and again, we're just avoiding waiting all of the Nikon processing that DaVinci Resolve may be expecting and seeing if that changes anything. Because if it is a sensor issue, it should show up in the Cinema DNG that we convert it to. And when we recorded these clips, we did overexpose the blue channel because that's where we're really going to see the stress happen. Is it going to handle it nicely or is it going to fall apart an artifact? And when we brought the Nikon N-Log in raw footage in, we did see that regardless of if we used a CST or the HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Color Processing, that the results were the same. We got banding in the blue area, which is very, very weird because this is a 12-bit Kodak. And this makes me think again, DaVinci Resolve is handling this completely weird. Because when we bring in the Cinema DNG footage, it doesn't matter if we convert with a CST, the archaic Blackmagic design, Gen 1 film curve into Rec 709, or if we change the debayer processing mode to linear in P3 and then convert that to Airy Log C and then convert Airy Log C into Rec 709, the results still look 
more pleasing and with a much smoother roll off within the collars than the Nikon log footage did. But this is again the same sensor data. Now here's where it gets interesting. When we go into color management with the Cinema DNG footage, first of all, we have to set up a different color management timeline because Cinema DNG is notoriously broken in DaVinci Resolve. My settings are simple. We go into a custom color management processing mode, and then we're going to set up our input color space is CIE XYZ. Our timeline color space is the DaVinci wide gamut. And then our output color space is going to be in this case, Rec 709. We're gonna turn off the input DaVinci Resolve Resolve transform and set the output DaVinci Resolve transform to luminance mapping. We're going to come out and make sure with everything that we're doing with the Cinema DNG, we click highlight recovery. The highlights still roll off pretty smooth. That being said, we can take this one step further because even though the Cinema DNG was giving us much better quality, we know it's still broken in DaVinci Resolve. So now that we've bypassed the Nikon log and in raw side of everything, let's go ahead and bypass the brokenness of Cinema DNG. And what we're going to do is we're now going to transform that into the red ride gamut in Log 3G10, like we did our clip earlier, export it, bring it back into Resolve, and the results show a much better rendering of the blue channel. And it doesn't matter how we move our offset wheel, we're still getting much cleaner results than we did with Nikon Log. But the thing is, the sensor data remains the same. When it comes to RAW, all we're really working with is the sensor data and the NLE is doing the processing for us so that we view it in a way that's normal to our eyes. The same way when we're converting log footage. If this was a Nikon sensor issue, it would have presented itself in the Cinema DNG footage but it does not. That being said, if we do turn down the exposure of the blue LEDs and no longer try to stress out the channel, we can still manage to get a clean result in Nikon and RAW and Nikon Log, but the results are much cleaner still in ProRes RAW when we zoom in on those lights and really look at just the artifacting that's happening on the edge with the Nikon RAW footage where it's not happening with the Cinema DNG footage that was converted from ProRes RAW. So with that being said, I think that this is a color matrix issue in the program of DaVinci Resolve and not on the Nikon side. So how do you protect yourself for the time being? Shoot blue colors at a lower exposure and try not to overexpose them because that's going to leave you more successful acceptable to artifacts currently. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications. If you have not, follow me on social media. The links are in the description down below, as well as my friend, Derek, who helped me out with these tests. His links are also in the description down below. My beautiful people, now more than ever, if you're ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, remember, Every day, airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired, and as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney. I'll see you beautiful people next time. Peace out.